Hello guys, we're back with Fresh Daily Megs. In the previous episodes, I had a title, but I didn't know the title because I pre-filmed all of them. So now we officially have a title that I'm going to intro every time. So we're learning, new podcaster here, it's fine. I just got done actually interviewing Juju Smith-Schuster, which was so much fun. He was so lively on camera and had so much personality. And it was just honestly like the best shoot. It was my first interview ever conducting one sort of, but... It was like so good. I'm gonna start a series and the series is the nicest celebrities slash athletes that I have met. I've been working for overtime for quite some time now and I've had the pleasure of meeting so many people that I'm a fan of, that uh, I've just known for a long time, people that I watched growing up, people that I listen to music wise. And I tried making a list last night of all the favorite people that I've met. And there was just so many that I forgot, like I keep forgetting and they keep coming into my mind. So I decided I'm going to split it up. And as I think of these stories, I'm going to make this little series. But I'm going to talk about two people today. So as you know, I just filmed with Juju. I just mentioned that. I'm going to talk about him because let me tell you guys, working in the sports industry, you know, like it's making friendships and building bonds and athlete relationships um is something so important because you know as a media company we really want to get good coverage we want to get videos we want to get content with athletes they're the big star of the show but i also work in the industry and i'm an influencer myself so making that kind of connection there is super important and sometimes it doesn't come as naturally but when juju walked into the studio today it was the most natural thing ever like he was so amazing had all this energy it's like all the energy you see on social media with him is literally exactly how he is he's so positive we talked about his tiktok and like all the videos you see of him dancing like that's literally him he's just always dancing always smiling always talking to everybody around him like it's just like the best energy to have in the studio especially when it's your first time interviewing somebody it was the perfect first person to interview he walks in and we introduce ourselves um uh, i put on his hoodie he made a hoodie with overtime and i probably already dropped by the time this came out but it was so dope it featured his dog bougie it's honestly insane like we we're both rocking his hoodies Ooh, i just tapped that by accident we we're both rocking his hoodies and we just jumped right into it and like all the questions i asked him like it was obviously like a lot of football questions but he like i thought it would just be kind of me grilling him and like him just responding but like at one point in like the podcast he literally was like threw something at me he was like he like so what about you and like asked about like my life on social media and stuff like that like when i tell you he just had so much like personable like features about him that like on camera that worked so well with what we were doing like sometimes athletes don't have that like a lot of athletes you know they're made for the sport, they're made for the field, they're made for the court, they're not made for the camera. Like sometimes people don't have a lot of practice in front of the camera and he's obviously had a lot of practice by now, but he's done a couple podcasts before mine, but he was just so happy. He called it an honor, like the most polite person ever. Honestly, like it's so crazy going, like seeing like athletes on social media then versus real life is so crazy because some of them are so different and then some of them are literally how you see them and it's so crazy. But I literally give Juju like a 12 out of 10. Like that was, perfect like absolute perfect and it's sometimes even i like after meeting so many people being in this industry meeting like celebrities people i've looked up to you still get nervous like before he walked in i was shaking a little bit maybe because i had two cups of caffeine like i don't know but i was shaking a little bit my hand was sweating i was so nervous because you know the impression you make and all that i've known him on social media for about a year and it's just like you've got to make that good first impression like he you want him to feel comfortable i want to feel comfortable and it was just great so like 10 out of 10 on Juju Smith-Schuster, like nicest athlete I've ever met. But also like I've met a lot of people and a lot of people actually bring up this story as well. A lot of people want to know about the David Dobrik story. Also one of the nicest people I have met, like so sweet. His team was super nice. And this was early, I, was, I want to say it's January, 2020. So this is actually like before COVID was like even shutting down the world. This is right before. Um, I feel like I was a completely different person, but this is like probably one of my favorite stories to tell because people still ask about it because people still watch his old vlogs and they see like little Megan, how I used to look and people are like, is that overtime Megan? Like, what is she doing here? It's actually before I was like really kind of big on social media, but I was doing social media um, at the same time because that's actually how David found me. So the quick story starts is like, 
I was on Instagram and I think he like I, I had DM'd him like years prior, a year prior, maybe months prior. I was a fan of him and he went to go DM me, I think, and saw that I had DM'd him first and he liked it. And I got the notification, David Dobrik liked your message. And I was like, stop. Like, this is a joke. This is not real. Come on, really? So I go on it. And the original plan was he was super friendly. We're like, hi, whatever. We're talking back and forth. And the original plan was, I think he saw me on TikTok. Um, I don't know how he found me, but, or maybe he found overtime. But he had like a question about basketball because I think he wanted to do a skit involving uh, the kiss cam on a basketball arena. And he thought maybe I could help him in setting that up with like the New York Knicks or the Brooklyn Nets. So I was like, yeah, I can help you, whatever, blah, blah, blah. When can you get out here? I think he said he was coming to New York at a certain time. He was actually going to speak at my school. So I think it was that next few weeks he was going to speak at my school. And whatever, fast forward, he comes to my school. He speaks in the auditorium. And I remember, like, texting him in, like, like prior and being like, should I even – should I come to that? Like, should I come watch what you do? And he's like, no, 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 don't worry about it. Like, we'll see you guys after. I didn't really know what he wanted to do, but I forget why it would happen, but apparently, oh no, I remember exactly what happened. This was around the time that um, Kobe had passed away. So, you know, pulling a, a skit or a kind of like a prank in the arenas in basketball was just a little, we felt uh, both it was a little inappropriate, a little, it was a lot inappropriate to kind of be joking around like that, um, especially like on like the Jumbotron. So I think that's why we pulled that skit and we decided not to do it. But he still wanted to do something with the people at my school, and I was going to help them set that up. So my roommates at the time were huge David Dobrik fans, like loved him so much. And I remember FaceTiming him before, and like my roommates were like taking videos of it because they were like, I can't believe he's on FaceTime. And I couldn't believe I was on FaceTime with him. And he was just so chill, so normal. So like that's how I knew this was going to be great because he was so friendly, so awesome. He speaks at the school that night, and then he drives over to our dorm building mind you the drive from my school to our dorm was like two minutes but obviously it's new york city it's a grid it takes forever but there's like 25 girls literally crowding his car crowding him he walks into the dorm i'm like texting coordinating him but the thing is i told my roommates to stay in the dorm i was like stay here just stay here they knew he was coming but i kind of wanted to surprise them with him and David walks in with Jason and Natalie and all these girls are swarming him and you had to sign people in at the dorm and so I little me like said to the security guard I'm like he's he's famous can we just let him go and the security guard was like no no sign him in I was like oh my god just like please like we're just doing something really quick and then he's leaving so he had his video camera and everything and a golf set so he goes in the elevator I'm telling you I've never been more packed like sardines in an elevator ever like I think I have a video of it somewhere but all he went to the elevator and I was in the elevator with him and Jason and Natalie and all the girls wanted to squeeze in with us and I was like oh my god I was like no the elevator weight limit please 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 and the doors wouldn't shut so security had to come out like the security guard of the dorm and was like you girls need to like move out of the way so we fit as many girls as we can into that elevator with him we go up to my dorm and then I was like, wait, you just need to come say hi to my friends. Like, you need to come, just come say hi before he did his little skit. And he goes to the dorm door and my friends literally were speechless. And like, I feel like that was one of my proudest moments as a friend was like showing their idol to them being like, here, look, he's right in front of you. You've watched him all this time. And like, he's right here. And um, like, they were so happy. And that made me so happy to see like their smiles. And um we all get out and then all the girls are obviously crowding the floor like the entire dorm hallway think of a dorm hallway how narrow that is we're crowding the dorm hallway i i should like i have a tiktok of it it's literally crazy and jason wanted to do a skit in his video where we shoot a golf ball into like this little homemade like putt putt set and if we got the ball in then we win a thousand dollars each and what he did was like the first 10 girls to be there like they took a picture of us and they're like all right only the girls in this picture will get the thousand dollars it was like 10 girls it's crazy and i was in the photo and so were my roommates and so he picked three girls to try it i was one of them of course i had to steal the limelight because i'm conceited no i'm kidding i just really wanted to try and win the thousand bucks i really was convinced that i could do it i was like i'm gonna get this for the girls like i used to play mini golf all the time the three girls go i go we miss the ball. Granted, he's a nice guy. He gave us a couple tries each. 
we missed the ball. But he is so nice and, like, so willing to, to give out stuff to his fans that he actually was like, hold on, let me have Jason do it. And if Jason gets it, then you all get a 1000 bucks. Like, he, like, was not skimping at all. He's so friendly, so grateful, so giving. And we hit it, and Jason, I think, hits it the first time, doesn't get it. And then the second time, the ball, he hits it, and it slowly goes into the hole, and we start jumping and screaming. We picked Jason up. We were freaking out. It was, like, probably the funniest moment ever, and they're just getting it all on camera. And I remember watching myself on the David Dobrik blog later. Brog. I remember watching myself on the David Dobrik blog later and being like, holy crap, I'm in a David Dobrik blog. And, like, people still watch to this day, and they're like, is that you? Because I used to straighten my hair. I used to do my makeup differently. I look a little different than I do now. I wear my hair, like, natural now. And people are like, that's, that's like, you. That's you. And I'm like, yeah, that's, like, baby Megan. That's, like, sophomore year Megan, like, in the David Dobrik blog. That was, like, my proudest moment. I was so excited. I always love showing that to people. I love when people ask about it because it was just, like, one of those things where you meet somebody that you've been watching for so long and... And it was just a great memory, a great experience. So like Juju, David, like both really great people. And there's so many other great like celebrities and influencers and athletes that I can speak on, but I want to keep the series going. So we talked about David, we talked about Juju, but another great person that I've met was I was down in an overtime elite game in Atlanta and two chains pulled up to the game and everyone knew two chains is pulling up everyone's like he's coming he's coming clear out to see uh people from my work were like texting me they're like you're gonna sit near him okay like you're gonna sit next to him and uh i forgot who picked up but they picked me and josh like overtime josh and they're like here come to the side of the arena sit on this sit court side here and clear these seats and like him and his team are gonna sit next to you guys so like in my mind i'm gonna be sitting right next to two chains which is like crazy like one of my favorite songs used to be like 4 a.m like with travis scott like you guys know so i was so crazy i'm like oh my god he's gonna be wearing all his chains like this dude is crazy and i was nervous but he comes with his team he sits down i wasn't right next to him and neither was josh but he sits through the game you know he's got his drip on and during halftime he starts shooting the ball and he has hops he's got He's hitting buckets left and right. Like, 2 chains is a little bit of a baller. Like, let me tell you. And I remember, like, trying to get behind him every time he shot so, like, I could get, like, in a video with him. Um, but then I had, like, my boss ask him if I could take a photo because I get nervous. Like, I get really nervous because you never know if they want to do photos or not. Um, you know, sometimes people aren't in the mood for photos, and I get that. Sometimes I'm not in the mood for photos, but I'm not 2 chains. Like, I am not 2 chains. So I was scared to ask him. So my boss asked him, and me and Josh got a photo with him, but that photo was like, I looked terrible in it. And I was like, I have to get another one. Like, but I can't just be bugging him about this. We gotta be friends. So he's shooting around, whatever. He passes the ball to me to hand to him. Like we're like, you know, we're becoming buddies on the court. And then after we take more photos, like after the game, like eventually we're, we have the guts to go up to him again. And I take a photo with him again with like David's professional camera. And then after, like, he just wanted to kind of stick around. Like, he wanted to see the facility. He's with his team. He was just, like, a genuine, super nice guy that, like, you know, you never know how people are going to be. You never know if they're going to be more to themselves and just reserved and just want to watch the game. But he wanted to see the OTE arena. He wanted to see, like, the players. He wanted to know more about my journey with overtime. He asked Josh questions. And we actually took him on a little tour um, with our CEO, Dan, around the arena and – we even made TikToks with him. Like, we became close enough, the three of us, me, Josh, and him, to, like, we started doing a little collab. And he even wanted to post me and Josh on his TikTok. So if you go on 2 Chains TikTok, there's literally a video that we all made together. And it was so fun, like, taking, like, their phone, like, seeing that, like, they have sounds and stuff like that. It's, like, so cool. And it just makes these people way more human to you. And, um, like, I was a little starstruck. I'm like, this guy is so chill and so nice. Like, I love him. He had great energy. He was just asking me and Josh, like, a bunch of questions about overtime and our journeys. And honestly, like, I'm another 12 out of 10. Like, super, super nice person. Um, two chains, like, never thought I would be, like, really close to two chains. But now I feel like I'm close to, I feel like if I saw two chains again, he would recognize me instantly. I would hope. I don't know. I'm not that cool, but like just super nice. I was so excited. I still fan. I mean, I fan girl. Like, you know, it's just like really cool. But like, I just love when people are super like down to earth like that and able to talk to. Because obviously, I feel like with social media, you see a different version of somebody 
or with their music, you see like just that. So when you actually kind of get to like talk to someone and get to know them behind what they're known for, like the face of them, and you get behind that, it's like so crazy the friendships you make. So like, I never thought I'd be chilling with two chains, but I was chilling with two chains and nicest person ever. And it was just like funny. Like he had so many questions about TikTok too. Like he doesn't even like use his TikTok really. Like he uses it to like really just do like promo. But um, we kind of brought some life to it and did a little trend on it, and it was fun. And he he killed it. He like really wanted to know like like the little dance move. Like he wanted to know how to do it. He was so interested. And me and Josh were telling him that like a lot of rappers or musicians like get bigger through TikTok and social media. And if you utilize like your followings on different platforms, like you can really push your music out there. I think like a person who does that really well is Lil Nas X. And um, so I feel like anyone can do that. So like he does that great. And I was like telling him, like you can like go crazier. Like you're already crazy, but you can take your level up here if you just post on TikTok more and just show more of yourself. Because I mean, you guys think of 2 chains, you think of his music. You don't think that he's like a super, I mean, obviously I would assume he's a nice guy, but like until you meet him, like, super chill like awesome all right guys that was just three little stories of just really nice people that i've met you know take my word for it i'm a really friendly person but i like vouch i'm just vouching for these really awesome people um but i have so many more stories to tell you guys but i'm not gonna say them all in one episode so stay tuned for another episode of nicest athletes and celebrities that i've met peace out <laughs>